Here we go again. Got another one for you. We got two 12 inch JL Audio WOV3s. I'm going a Chrysler 300. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I start each process the same way. Four sheets of uh, MDF, put it on my table, rip them down to where they're manageable, and I can put them on my table saw and get my clean cuts to precision. Same steps as always. If you're new to the channel, 100% glue coverage. I use inch and five eighths wood screws spaced anywhere between four to six inches apart. Countersunk flush, this box will be wrapped. Um, really don't use silicone. I used to a long time ago on my insides, but when I started really honing in on my cuts, making sure everything was flush and even and crisp, I never, the gaps went away and the glue kind of did everything for me. Uh, I'd always run a bead on the inside. That's what you see there on the corners. That's just a bead of glue. That's all it is ran with my finger. Here I am showing you this gapping of my screws. It's not perfect. Just give you an idea to look at when I say four to six inches. Just showing you the depth of the screws that I'm using and why I use them. Inch and five eighths gives you plenty of grab on the other side to pull it, pull the pieces together. Working on the port side now. Got that piece up in the place getting ready to start lining out my port area here i am just making sure everything is nice and straight got the port i'm gonna go ahead and put that round over on the inside edge get that taken care of before i install it into the box i did that once before and got ahead of myself had to sand it by hand and said i would never do that again marked it outlined it so i know where to tape off and where my glue needs to stop here i am putting in 45 showing you the gapping keeping the same distance of the port all the way throughout off 45 to the inside edge that way it stays the same gapping all the way down on your port so you got a smooth airflow pre-cut the 45s get them all lined out showing you this i switched the inch and a quarter screws i put one on each side like i said showing the depth so it's not going to push all the way through the box and everything masked and taped off to prevent overspray it won't be seen but it just looks clean to me here I am spraying up the porous side of the MDF to try to stop the paint from absorbing through the material. Two different techniques. I've tried that before it works. Uh, and then I went back and actually hit it with a thin layer of glue, let it dry, sanded it, and then sprayed it. And then that was all it took. Pre-drilled my three uh, inch and a quarter wooden dial braces that'll tie the back of the box into the port, give me rigidity there. Pre-paint everything outside of the box. Makes it a lot easier. Here I am. There's that step. I'm adding a thin layer of glue. You can see it parts are lighter and darker hit it with that and then I hit it with the paint and it stopped all that so a thin layer of glue let it dry sand it'll stop all that absorption ripped off the masking tape and the newspaper off and I flipped it over and transferred the outline of the bottom of the port as well I am ready to install got the glue in place get creative with your clamps you can take push down pressure all the way through so it pushes it evenly holds in place when you add them screws Outlining it helps preventing missing your screw spots because it does happen. Here I am. I didn't spray enough over, so I got that little deal there, but I went back and hit it, covered that up. You never know. Now I'm going to line out my uh, spacing on the bracing, those inch and a quarter wooden dowels. Ring pre mark on the back side, inside, drilled all the way through, hit it with the sander, and I put a little dab of glue on each side before I press the dials into place. Just took some thin nails to hold true, screw one side in, take the nail out and screw the other side. <clears throat> the other side in, excuse me. Clamping, ensure no gaps. While those screws set into place. Here I am, you're not gonna see this. I just hand sanded it, it was just bothering me. I don't know, I'm weird like that. Now I can do the Bracing, wall bracing is what I'm doing here. Should be two different pieces here, one on each side of the box. 100% glue coverage, I can't suppress it enough. Now I'm doing the top piece of the box, which would be actually the inside. You see the port, that's what I'm masking off and getting ready to install it, outlining all the top pieces. I am adding some masking tape around the inside top section of the port just to prevent glue runoff as it pressed everything down which makes it a lot easier when I'm trying to remove everything. Everything clamped into place. Hit it with the orbital sander, get everything nice and crispy. 
Now this is the double baffle or the flush trim baffle that I'm actually lining out on it. Held it in place, marked it, drilled my holes through both pieces. That way I know my center point of my sub cutouts will match up when I remove it. Always pre-drill. Show your marks are even and the same. Hit it with the router on the outside just to get it flush. I'll remove it and I'll drill or uh, cut those out here after I cut the mounting holes out of the box. Always pre-check my cutouts before I cut that router on. The box is cut now. I screwed the uh, flush baffle to the table so it doesn't spin when I'm cutting on it. Taking measurements. Got it cut and I added a secondary screw on the inside so that it does not spin as I'm cutting it and I remove it once I'm done. There's a the flush trim baffle ready to roll. So now all your holes will line up. You pre-drill it before versus doing them separate. 100% glue coverage. It's inch and a quarter screws. Got to screw it into place now. I'm getting ready to cut some of that eighth inch or that quarter inch hardboard. I'm setting my depth on my saw. Made a couple of passes on my, my table, which is actually a door. Straight edge clamped into place. Now I can go ahead and start uh, cutting my pieces around the box because this is what I'm going to use to allow me to tuck my carpet around my edges. If you've seen my videos, this is what I'm, this is what I'm doing now. Clamping, temporarily screwing into place, no glue. Then I router them all or flush trim them all the way around where everything is smooth. I'm going to cut out the, uh, I think it's the front baffle. Nope, port. Got it wrong. Look at me. Routed it out, flush trimmed it out. There's my pieces. Put that rabbit edge around the areas that I'm going to tuck the fabric. You see on that left side, there's not a lot of material to mess with, so I had to watch it as I was cutting it so I wouldn't take too much off. Here I'm finding the depth for my speaker terminal. I didn't want to get it in the port and I didn't want to hit that wall brace. So that's what I'm measuring here. Making my marks on the outside before I pre-drill the hole. Double checking myself on alignment. Boom, there we go. Got that into place, pre-drilled those holes. All right, now I can go ahead and add me a center brace to the box. Use the same uh, inch and a quarter wooden dowels. Here I am pre-marking everything. Get it prepped and ready. Put some glue on each end. Pre-drill, as always, so the way, the way your wood does not split. I used uh, inch and five eight screws on this as well. Screwed into place, trimmed it out with some glue. Now I can get ready to start adding these uh, quarter inch hard pieces on, hardboard pieces. Glue coverage, space uh, screws accordingly. Here I am, I had to drill through the inside out of that uh, speaker terminal. Got those done. The port side next. I like using these smaller head uh, star screws here, these GRK fasteners. I'm working with thin material or thin edges. Just pre-marking so I wouldn't cutting too much or gluing too much on that hardboard. Everything pre-drilled, step up bit. Then I remembered I had to still had a piece to cut out of that baffle, so I had to take it all back off. The glue was already starting to set up, but I got it all sanded back down. Not that it would have been noticed, but I got ahead of myself. I forgot I was supposed to cut this front piece out for that plexi. So here's what I'm doing now, getting it marked out, getting my spacing right, lined out. I grabbed something around the shop. I think it was, uh, had my pencils in there. Yeah, that old coffee cup. Got the top and bottom parts arched out like I want. I go ahead and use my uh, scrap pieces as templates. So some double face tape, press those into place box it off and then I'll cut the arches out by hand with the jigsaw. Get that flush trim bit. And once around on it and I can pop these back loose. I can get with that jigsaw. Work that top and bottom arch. And then I'll be able to hit it with a rabbit edge. Yep. Then I can screw it into place after I get this plexi cut. <laughs> I got it outlined and I cut all my plexi on this table saw. 
My table saw may look shiny right there is because I have clear uh, tape on it just to prevent uh, scratching, even though this does have that protective film on it. Here I marked the back piece. I got another idea, and that's what I marked the back piece so I can cut it out. And like I said, when I'm doing this custom stuff, sometimes I get creative on the fly. Things will pop up. I'll see something, hear something. I'm like, ah, I want to do this. I want to change that. Go home, sleep on it. That's how a lot of these ideas come about. It's on the fly. A lot of this stuff isn't already planned. Now, to cut this rascal. If you didn't think you can cut <laughs> a circle on a table saw, I'm ready to let you know you can. This ain't the first time either. There we go. Drops right into place. Now back to that front baffle. I'll go ahead and put the fabric down first. Chose that fabric because it resembles the color of the outside of the customer's car. Try to coordinate these boxes as best I can. Hit it with that uh, two contact spray adhesive. Rub it into place. Now I can start. Start adding this baffle. Peel off that first layer of protective coating and that piece, that the piece I'm peeling off will face the fabric, the red fabric, face down. Screw placement. There we go. I'm leaving the outer protective coating still on to the very last minute. Now I'm gonna get creative on this back side. The circle cutout was there, but it was missing something. It was too much too much uh, real estate out there I didn't like so I'm gonna go ahead and make some templates put some accent areas in here cutouts to kind of make it pop got it all marked out and gapped the way I like it again I'll go with my own scrap pieces I use as templates get some of the double face tape press everything into place layers on this was tedious but it's it's worth it all this little bitty stuff is definitely worth it if you take your time random pieces but I cut everything down to the same gapping so it made it a lot easier and those little stop blocks that's what all those little pieces are for a step up on that pattern I'll put those into place to keep everything as even as possible There you go, you can see it. Pre-drill everything, just enough just to get that flush trim bit in there. That's all I need. Set it on that table and go to work. Get them all cut out. Just gotta pop those uh, MDF pieces off. Now I'll flip it over and go ahead and put them rabbit edges around everything. So I can tuck that fabric up under there. Now I'll go ahead and install the back piece. Same procedures as the front. Remove that back protective coating. Double or uh, two point contact adhesive. Traced and outlined everything, trimmed away the excess. And just screw the back piece on as well. When these I don't do 100% coverage, like I said, it's just as long as I get contacts on it. I really don't have to have it, but it makes me feel better. Clamped into place before I start pre-drilling on screw holes. Here we go. Well, these are one inch screws, so I have to clip them and grind them down so it wouldn't poke all the way through the box on the inside and get into that port area. Alrighty, I'm ready to start wrapping it. Went with this charcoal gray because again, this matches the inside of his trunk. And that's what I went with this color for. Two point contact spray glue. Pretty straightforward, set it in place, rub it in the, rub it on down. Finish rubbing everything on in, making sure it makes that contact. Then we're back around the top, start trimming and tucking around the top of the box. Get the easier stuff knocked out before I jump on the back side. Took my razor blade, make slits all the way down the middle. Then took that little tool on the left there and just tucked everything in around on them rabbit edges that I cut. Repeated the steps, got both sides knocked out. Now I can start on the center part. Again, that's why you keep that extra, uh, the protective edge on there for this very reason. Help protect it. Trimmed it on back, tucked it on in. I went ahead and covered up the subwoofer cutouts just to prevent overspray on the inside of the box. That's the only reason those are sitting in there. 
Sprayed it on down, sprayed the back side of the fabric, got it all marked off with that. I've uh, got some paper, tucked everything around the edge so I wouldn't get any overspray on the fabric either. Pressed and rub everything in. That's why I like using this fabric because it stretches before it breaks, it does not rip. Got it all trimmed in, ready to roll. Now I can work on the centerpiece. Just repeating my steps, people. That's all I'm doing. They marked off using, like I said, scrap pieces of paper just to prevent overspray onto my fabric. That's the only reason I'm putting all that stuff around the edges is all that paper. Putting that hardboard around the port like that and that rabbit edge allows you to get that clean tuck around your ports so you just don't cut it with your knife and have it flapping over time. That eliminates all of that. Flip the box on around and just repeat the steps on the other side. I spray that contact on the hardboard and the fabric and let it set for about 60 seconds before I end up attaching them together. Here I've got the bottom side trimmed, tucked, and put staples around it to prevent lift over time. That fabric won't lift off. Now I can get ready for those slits on the back side of the box. Using the same color fabric, cut them down, dabbed it with some of that glue, lightly sprayed it, pressed them into place, and trimmed them around and roughed them in. Went on hand, tucked them on around in there smooth. And there it is. Now I can go ahead and remove that protective film off that centerpiece before I get ready to put the decals on. No scratches or anything. Repeat the process on the front one. Now we should be just about ready to get these subs wired up and installed. Again, by them JL Audios, WO 12 inch version, V3s. Very good sounding subs. No complaints on my end. Clean, well built design, simple, straightforward, and they put in work. I like them. They did well in that sealed truck box as well. Very well. Lined everything up, tapped it with the nail just to line up my screws from pre drilling. Always drilling at a slight angle inward. Using just standard 12 gauge OFC. Be connecting them together positive to positive, negative to negative. Run it on out to that terminal, and that 12 gauge does slide right in those push terminals. Didn't have to trim any wires back or anything, just a tight twist, and they slid right on in. Finished it off with a couple of eye connectors. Now I can go ahead and upgrade my speaker terminal. A lot of people don't like using these. I've had no problems with them. I've put them in several builds in the past. I have not had one fail on me. Just clip that little push connector off. Reuse the flat square piece. Put my eye connectors back on. Lock washer nuts. And it's good to go. Now I can secure it into the box. Put a couple screws in it. Run them in by hand. I don't use drills for that. Double checking my ohm load before I move on to the next step. After getting both subwoofers secured into place, I can start putting these decals on. Got the customer's last name I want to put on the front of the box. But with that one there, I cut half of it off the back piece. I aligned the top half, then I'll rub the second half into place. Just makes it easier when you're trying to make sure everything is straight, or as straight as you can get it. Get it rubbed in, then I'll remove the bottom half. And rub it on down. Use a rag, make sure everything's got even contact, and start pulling it off from top to bottom, slightly at a slight angle. Oh yeah, it came out nice. Look at my head back there. I was trying not to get in the picture, but the angle was off, so I just said forget it. Now I get the back one on. Very good company, I use them to do all my decals, all my decals. Making sure I'm square all the way around, as close as I possibly can be. And I'll line it all out with some tape on the top side just to make sure it didn't move. And I'll repeat the process. I'll cut the bottom half of the uh, protective edge off off the decal, or this is actual sticker. And then I'll rub it on into place, get all the bubbles out, and repeat the process and work the top side in. Yeah, they did an amazing job on this. It was a different color, and then I had him change it to try to match that maroon and it came out great. I love the way that came out. 
There we go, that's the back side. Done. Box is complete. It's good to go. I've been testing it out in the shop, just letting it play, because he's not gonna come get it. Got about another week before he comes to get it. And I just got it playing in the background every time I'm up there doing something, and man, that sounds amazing on the little power that I got it on. And there you have it, another 210 Designs enclosure finished. Topped him off with a custom t-shirt, decal, and wristband.